I was a student in the 50s in Madras and opposite our big hospital, which is Asia's biggest hospital those days, there was a doctor called uh, U.L. Uh, uh, Janardhan Rao or someone, a Brahmin old man. When I was 17 years old, he was 70 years old. And he was practicing medicine then with an L.I.M. which he got 70 years earlier. L.I.M. means they don't eat nothing there. But if we had 2,000 outpatients, he had about 1,500 outpatients. And his queue used to be from Park Town via Chinatown to the, the almost to beach. That was the queue in the morning. Every day, every day. The old man will have a stethoscope. Once I saw that, it's about a, a meter long because he doesn't uh, touch these patients. You know, poor patients, they smell and all, they don't take bath, he thinks. So he has an assistant who takes a chest piece and puts it on the patient's chest like that. And this fellow will keep it in the, the earpiece here. He'll, uh, the, uh, the, there are three rooms. Patients come in one room, he sits in the middle room, and the third room is on the other side. Every patient comes with a bottle. In those days there were no tablets. You know, when I was a student, we had only few mixtures. So they bought, bring a bottle, put the bottle there, a big uh, receptacle will be kept. And the thing is taken through the compounder's room to the other side. Compounder fills some medicine in some bottle, which, which is whose bottle is what, nobody knows. And that is taken to the third room, and when the patients pass out, they pick up their bottles and go. Very interesting thing happens. Patient comes in, he is ushered in, he says, Enna, Enna in Tamil means what? And by the time he opens his mouth, that fellow is, you know, Jargandi, you know, like in Tirupati temple, he is already Jargandi next. And in between, the chest piece touches the patient once. That's all what happens. And obviously, patients get better, otherwise they won't come back. Because he doesn't advertise, those days there are no television to advertise, or there are no paper advertising saying, saying, come here, we will do your, you know, you'll give you a new foot, or we'll give you a new heart, nothing like that. Word of mouth. Patients from all over Chennai and the surrounding suburbs used to hawk, come to ULR and Rao's. That impressed me a lot. As a young child, I was looking at ULR and Rao's and appreciating, my God, he's God. Today, you know, he is very scientific. Very, very scientific. My former chief in Harvard, who is 92 years old, still directs research, Super Wallace His name is Bernard Laun, who is a Nobel laureate. Who, that shocking machine that you they all use in the hospital, he invented that. He directed research about 10 years ago. What did he do? 600 patients over a 5-year period were sent up for bypass surgery to the Harvard Medical School from the Massachusetts cardiologists. And they were doing laser tip bypass surgery. It's called total myocardial refractory. Nothing, no cutting the chest and nothing of the sort. Patient doesn't even know. You just put a catheter in and make holes in the heart and convert a man into a snake. Snakes don't have coronary system. They suck blood from the cavity through the holes. So we make a man a snake and then he is okay. He said none of these people scientifically require bypass surgery. So he devised a new study. Patient comes, number one, goes to theater A. Patient comes, number two, goes to theater B. C, A, third patient, fourth patient B. Alternate patient, is that random? Close your eyes and randomize do that. And the protocol in theater A was in anesthetize, operate, send. In B was anesthetize, keep him sleeping. When he wakes up, tell him he had a wonderful operation, send. Do nothing. Okay? 298 here and 299 here. Now at the end of five years, all these 299 who went to theater B are perfect. Now thallium scan shows their revascularization is 100% perfect. In B, in A, half of them, the chest pain did not go, so they had to have a cut open, regular surgery. The other half of the half are with their maker in heaven. The remaining half of the half, they are having ADR, adverse drug reactions, because of diclopidine, aspirin, and what have you, all the blood thinners, they have had cerebral hemorrhage, this, that, and problems. But those who went to theater B are all happy. Now what happened to them? They were told at the end, when they woke up from anesthesia, your operation has been very successful. That's it. That's called the placebo effect. The body's immune system corrects it 
and opens up collaterals just as body does in all of us sitting here all of us including the children we all have mark my words we all have coronary artery blocks if you didn't have you wouldn't be here about 5% of human beings don't get coronary blocks and they die before the age of 25 of a sudden heart attack this is called preconditioning nature preconditions and the same nature does what it does now somebody wanted to know what happens when you take a chemical medicine chemical medicine is a new idea western idea wall street greed eh? you don't know that i'll tell you what they said what will happen so a professor of medicine to be very precise professor of genetics in washington douglas c wallace d c wallace did a wonderful study he invented a chip called the mit chip mitochondrial chip his own invention so he tags it on to the drug and gives the drug to the patient and traces it where it goes the chemical drug goes inside the system to the, the stomach and the human immune system human wisdom says what is this this chemical i have not seen my forefathers have not seen it has never been in our race so it must be some poison which has come in throw it to the kid liver that's what happens to any poison you take a poison it's first sent to the liver so every chemical drug that you swallow goes to the liver mark my words every drug goes to the liver when it goes to the liver the liver tries to best it possible destroy it if something remains it comes out of the liver that's called the first pass effect some of the medical doctors here sitting must have heard pharmacology class first pass effect first pass effect means what remains of the out comes out of the liver it's a very small amount that might do harm but the liver is definitely damaged that's why today we have a new disease called non alcoholic cirrhosis of the liver it's an epidemic actually when i was a student we only knew one thing cirrhosis means alcoholic cirrhosis now new disease is almost cirrhosis alcoholic cirrhosis has disappeared because people are now afraid drinking too much of alcohol there are a few but every one of us possibly is a candidate for non alcoholic cirrhosis is it not if it's not greed what else is tell me so douglas so beautifully showed that none of these drugs are accepted by the human system whereas he tried chinese and tibetan herbs he didn't try ayurveda because ayurveda is very unpopular in the west or at least it is becoming popular now but in america ayurveda has not been very popular but he took chinese herbs and tibetan herbs the minute the herb goes into the stomach the stomach says aha this is new this is new. i know it it's a part of the food that my ancestors were taking and it's not thrown into the liver and directly goes and if it can do some good it does this is what happens with all herbal medicine